In the movie Men in Black, Will Smith's character is in shock after his first encounter with an alien. Dumbfounded, he begins to question everything he's ever known. Tommy Lee Jones' character responds to his silence with the following. 1,500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. And 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. Facts change around us all the time, and what we know can have profound consequences. Take radiation, for example. At one time, people thought that radioactive materials had health benefits. Doctors recommended them, and companies incorporated them into their products, including everything from ointments and creams to toothpaste, even enema treatments. The idea that radiation could be beneficial was a fairly well-established fact. Of course, we no longer think this is the case. We now think that radiation is far from a panacea, and in many cases can be quite harmful. And adhering to the outdated version of the facts can be dangerous. Similarly, when one theory of disease was popular, physicians thought nothing of going directly from performing autopsies to delivering babies. Ignaz Semmelweis, the physician who first suggested that doctors wash their hands, was actually ridiculed and eventually went mad due to people ignoring him. We now think that germs carry sickness rather than low-lying clouds of disease, and once again, adhering to the outdated view of the facts can be dangerous. And what about nutrition? What foods are healthy or unhealthy for us have also changed. Whether tomatoes are poisonous, as was once thought to be true, whether red wine is good for you or bad for you, whether we should eat carbs or fatty foods, all this is changing constantly. Even how we take care of babies has changed over time whether babies should sleep on their stomachs or their backs, whether pregnant women should smoke, I highly doubt that what each of us do with our own children is identical to what our parents did with us. And yet, for each generation, we had established facts. Even facts that don't impact our lives as directly can change. My grandfather in school learned the wrong number of human chromosomes in a single cell, 48 instead of 46. And we all thought that Pluto was a planet. The number of species has increased by thousands in recent years, and the number of elements in the periodic table has also changed in recent decades. And pity the parent with a child obsessed with dinosaurs. This is me, when I was about three, rocking the young Tom Wolf look. <laughs> and as a kid, I loved dinosaurs. But what did loving dinosaurs mean to this little boy? It meant loving these, these large, gray-green, slow, plodding, reptilian monsters. Of course, we no longer think all dinosaurs look like this any longer. We now think many of them look more like this, these smaller, fast-moving, brightly colored, feathered creatures. In other words, what we think dinosaurs look like has undergone a complete overhaul in only a few decades. So facts are changing around us all the time, and this change can appear random and ever-present. For many, this can cause a certain amount of anxiety and worry with regards to changing knowledge. For some, it can even cause a crisis of confidence in what we know. And what's compounding this is the seeming randomness with which specific facts are changing. Which fact is going to be overturned next? So what are we to do? How can we deal with all this uncertainty? But is it really true? Do we need to be relegated to this life of doubt and confusion with regards to changing knowledge? In fact, we don't have to. Even though facts change, there is an order and a regularity to how they change. And this can give us hope and a way of ordering our world. Going back to radioactivity, consider uranium. Here's a single atom of uranium. When an atom of uranium decays, it breaks down and releases a certain amount of energy. While we know exactly how a single atom of uranium is going to decay, we don't know when. That's unpredictable. It could decay in the next fraction of a second, or we might have to wait millions and millions of years. But things change when we go from a single atom to many, many atoms, to an entire chunk of uranium. Suddenly, we go from the unpredictable to the systematic and the regular. And we can actually even graph, with a single curve, the decay over time. And this curve can itself be encapsulated by a single number, the half-life. The half-life describes the amount of time it takes for half of the atoms in a chunk of uranium to break down and decay. We can't predict which specific atoms are going to be in that half, but we do know overall the shape of the decay of the uranium. And the same thing is true with facts. We can't predict which specific discovery is going to occur or which fact is going to be overturned, but facts are far from random in the aggregate. 
Instead, there is a shape and a regularity to how knowledge grows, how knowledge changes and becomes overturned, and even how it decays over time. And this shape can be understood in the language of mathematics. One of the first people to explore this is a man by the name of Derek J. DeSola Price. Back in the late 1940s, Price had recently become an instructor at Raffles College, what's now the National Uni University of Singapore. And when he got there, the library was under renovation. It seems to have been a fairly small operation because the library was actually handing out its volumes to its students and faculty while the library was being renovated. So Price received a complete set of a British scientific journal, brought it home, and proceeded to stack it in chronologically ordered piles against the walls in his apartment. One day, he was looking at these chronologically ordered piles, and he realized that the heights weren't even, but they also weren't of random height either. Instead, they adhered to a clear mathematical shape. In this case, exponential growth. So Price began to collect more and more data, and he realized that it was not simply the case that the number of pages in a single scientific journal obeyed mathematics. Instead, there were regularities to how knowledge grew in general. So for example, the number of scientific journals over time has, has obeyed regularities, from the first journals in 1665 to tens of thousands of journals only 300 years later. The number of elements in the periodic table has also obeyed regularities, as the number over time can be described by a series of mathematical curves. The power of particle accelerators over time also obeys regularities, in this case also exponential growth, as each successive technology increases the amount of energy that can be harnessed. And even the number of universities over time re obeys regularities, from the medieval period to the modern day. In other words, overall, there is a shape to how knowledge grows. To be clear, we can't predict which specific discovery is going to occur or which paper is going to be published. But facts are far from random in the aggregate. Overall, we know how knowledge grows. And just as we know how knowledge grows, so too do we know how knowledge becomes overturned. About 10 years ago, a team of scientists in France actually set out to measure how knowledge becomes overturned in two specific fields within medicine, hepatitis and cirrhosis. They gave a series of papers to a panel of experts from over a span of 50 years, and they said which of these papers are true and which ones have been overturned or otherwise rendered obsolete. And they found a clear curve of the decay over time. They found that as the age of a paper increases, represented by the horizontal axis, the likelihood that the paper is still true decreases. And in fact, we can even read the half-life of these fields off the graph, 45 years takes about 45 years for the knowledge in these fields to become overturned or otherwise rendered obsolete. And this gives rise to the half-life of facts. We can do similar types of analyses in other fields, all to understand how the knowledge in different subject areas becomes overturned over time. But that being said, this doesn't mean that therefore everything is going to become overturned or is going to be otherwise rendered unknowable. This flux is simply part of the scientific process and part of the process of an asymptotic approach to the truth. In other words, as time passes, we're getting closer and closer to an understanding of how the universe truly works. This point was made effectively by Isaac Asimov. When people thought the Earth was flat, they were wrong. When people thought the Earth was spherical, they were wrong. But if you think that thinking the Earth is spherical is just as wrong as thinking the Earth is flat, then your view is wronger than both of them put together. <laughs> In fact, we can actually even measure how our view of the world has improved over time. So the correct view of the world is a type of geometric object known as an oblate spheroid. But we can look at the amount of error in previous views. So for example, the flat Earth worldview implies zero inches of curvature per mile. It's flat. On the other hand, a perfectly spherical view of the world implies eight inches of curvature per mile. It's a totally different view of the world, but it's actually not that much better, at least for very small scales. Of course, it is a much better approximation when compared to the oblate spheroid. So over time, our ability to measure and understand our surroundings has improved. And, it, and these improvements have gone hand in hand with improvements in our tools and technologies, which themselves have, have obeyed regularities. Witness the particle accelerator improvements I showed earlier, or Moore's Law in computers. As science and technology have improved, we're better able to measure and understand our surroundings. And not only has measurement improved, but how we define measurement itself how we define the units of measurement has also improved. So for example, take the meter. When the meter was first defined, it was defined in terms of the distance between the equator and the North Pole. And at that time, no one had even ever been to the North Pole. The meter was redefined, redefined yet again, each time becoming more and more precise. We now define the meter in terms of the speed of light. And with each re redefinition, we've understood our surroundings more precisely. And we can actually encapsulate the amount of error in each definition of the meter. 
So this is the amount of error in each successive definition of the meter. And we can see over time, our, the amount of error has decayed and decayed in a regular fashion. So as measurement improves, we're better able to understand the world around us. So far from knowledge changing, being random and capricious, it turns out it obeys rules and regularities. If we can understand these rules and regularities, we don't need to be anxious or worried by changing knowledge. Instead, by understanding them, this can allow us to place bounds on our surprise. Medical schools already incorporate this into their curricula, teaching their students that a large fraction of what they learn is going to become obsolete within a few years of their graduation. If we can recognize this, whether in medical school or, school or otherwise, the change around us doesn't need to be as alarming. But ideally, lack of fear shouldn't be the end. It should be the beginning. We know a lot about the world. We're constantly improving our understanding of the universe. But along the way, so much of what we know is going to change and become overturned. But far from being worrying, this should be terribly exciting. This is why scientists work at the frontier. It's where we know the least, but where the most exhilarating things are happening. So whether a scientist or not, we need to internalize this idea of changing knowledge. If we can incorporate this into how we read the news, think about public policy, even how we deal with differences between our children's textbooks and our own, we'll be better prepared to deal with the rapid change around us. So don't turn away from changing facts. Embrace them, armed with the understanding that they obey certain rules. As Tommy Lee Jones said, imagine what you'll know tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>